When we think of biomarker testing and how it's carried out, there are multiple different aspects of how these tests are performed now and even more to come. The traditional example, particularly in lung, is that you um, go to your doctor, they see a spot or they see some tissue that looks abnormal, and they get an actual tissue sample. From that tissue sample, which can be given from something as easy as a bronchoscopy, uh, which means that they have a scope with a little camera, it goes down your nose and it goes down your windpipe into your lung, and actually they're able to then guide with um, some precision being able to take tissue. There's other ways of getting the tissue. Um, you have something called VATS, which I know most patients are probably familiar. They, they've heard the term, but never understood that it meant video assisted thoracoscopy. That's a big fancy way of just sort of saying that they essentially go in between your ribs and make a little hole. And then again, with a very skilled surgeon, they're able to guide it the entire way, see where to take tissue from. So the question comes, now that you have the tissue, are there other ways? Well, we're talking about circulating DNA um, as being biomarkers, um, and there are other ways of getting biomarkers through urine and spit that are non-invasive. So the big category is biomarker testing, how's it carried out? Two big buckets. There's the non-invasive, meaning that you can do spit, blood, or urine, and then there's the invasive. Now, once these things are taken, People talk about, well, then how are they analyzed? Well, they have to go to pathologists and really big um, um, groups that work together that analyze these data. So you have things where you have multiplex biomarker panels, which they might run 96 to 120 different samples and look at very different biomarkers of what your tissue responds to. They may actually have what's called a smaller panel. And we know that the common mutations uh, that we worry about in lung cancer are ALK and EGFR and KRAS. And so depending on where you go, all testing is not the same. It's important to always ask as a patient, got it? Are you doing non-invasive testing, meaning that I can do this testing without giving tissue? Or is this invasive testing? And then what type of tests will you run? Now, the funny part about that is that most time we want to get a test, uh, just like when I would take a test in high school, and you want the results that day. Well, in general, it doesn't always work that way. And so there is a level of patience. Most really good programs now should be able to turn around a test result, whether it's non-invasive or invasive, in less than 72 hours. However, having said that, it can be fairly complicated. Here are some of the factors that actually get in the way. Insurance. Occasionally, sometimes you get these tests, and you go, of course they're covered by insurance. Not always. So bottom line is that that can be a complicating factor. By the way, you would sort of think that these tests, when you go to a doctor in a, in a, in a place, that they're already made up. They have the pathologist, they have the tools, they have everything. Not so fast. Occasionally, hospitals, as great as they are, health systems, as great as they are, sometimes will have to send these outside of their own pathology department. That's not always bad. Sometimes, as we call it, outsourcing these things to really big companies that this is all they do can actually allow us to have even more accurate testing. And the turnaround time may be a little more but sometimes it's worth waiting. But it's the waiting after you've now had this sample that can be a uh, that can be a frustration. The best news I have is that in general these days things are getting more standard than they had been before. But if you have a problem with waiting, here's what my suggestion would be: call because you are never a bother. And if you're with the health system that you're bothering them, then Anyways, we can have that conversation later. It does take time to get your results. It won't be the same day. However, most of the time it's within 72 hours. And most of the results, when you don't understand it, because sometimes now we have large organizations that do this, they can over uh, inundate you with a lot of information. Please always know that you are in the driver's seat and when you get your results back and you don't understand them, you have a right 
to actually get on the phone or get on Zoom and actually have someone explain them to you. So it's an exciting field. We are actually getting to do even more in the context of even more intricate type uh, biomarker testing um, that we think will be easier, more not less invasive. And believe it or not, turnaround times that are faster. But again, we're not quite there yet. Um, at the longest, you'll probably have to wait for a test a week to 10 days. Again, in general, though, most places are now able to turn that around in 72 hours. 